Just before we start, a super quick reminder about our merch store. We have a variety of lines available, but the Germany design only has two days left on the site. We'll talk about it more at the end, but I just wanted to let you know that links are in the description. The European Parliament, as the name suggests, is the Parliament of the European Union and is crucially the only elected body within the EU. And currently, they're holding elections. These elections are particularly important at the moment, with citizens of EU nations getting the opportunity to elect a new batch of MEPs very soon. The European Parliament consists of 751 MEPs, or members of the European Parliament, with the allocation of seats laid down in European treaties, which take into account the size of the population of each country, with smaller countries getting more seats than strict proportionality would imply. Each member state has between 96 and 6 MEPs. These are the hard limits set out in the Lisbon Treaty. The more citizens a member state has, the more seats it will be allocated. But each MEP will have a greater number of citizens to represent, a system known as decressive proportionality. For example, in 2014, Germany had a population of just under 82 million people, getting the maximum allocation of seats, 96, each seat therefore representing about 850,000 citizens. In contrast, in 2014, Malta had a population of just 416,000 people, getting the minimum allocation of seats, 6. Therefore, each seat represented about 69,000 citizens, meaning each MEP represents far fewer people in smaller countries like Malta than in larger ones like Germany. This is a similar system to the ones used in other countries, such as the US House of Representatives, where some states have more representatives per citizen than others. Back to the EU. Each member state votes in accordance with their domestic requirements and can vote over a period of four days, according to the customs of the member state. The only stipulations are that some form of proportional representation should be used. Other than that, member states are free to decide on most other aspects. Countries remain free to create wards and voting districts as they see fit. To save us from repeating ourselves, if you're in the UK and you want to know what happens there, we have a video about that, so you can check that out by following the link in the description. Each MEP tends to be voted on as a member of a local or national political party. For example, the Conservatives in the UK, En Marche in France, or the CDU in Germany. Upon election, most MEPs proceed to affiliate more closely with Europe-wide political groupings of which there are eight major groups. Therefore, MEPs tend to be grouped based on their policies and political beliefs, clustering in political groupings which represent them, rather than grouping by their nationality. The two biggest groups as they currently stand are the European People's Party, or EPP, a centre-right grouping of 216 MEPs, including Germany's CDU, formerly led by Angela Merkel, and France's Les Republicains founded by Nicolas Sarkozy, and formerly the Conservative Party in the UK, until they withdrew under David Cameron's leadership. The grouping's leaders include Donald Tusk, European Council President, and Jean-Claude Juncker, the European Commission President. The other largest group is the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats, or S&D. They're a centre-left grouping, with 185 MEPs, which includes Portugal's Partido Socialista, headed up by Antonio Costa, and the UK's Labour Party. However, the UK is set to leave the EU, and therefore this is all set to change, but not just yet. The EU has proposals in place to redistribute the 73 seats the UK is set to give up, giving these seats to underrepresented member states. They will also be formally abolishing 46 of the UK's 73 seats in order to give the EU leeway for future enlargement. This leaves 27 seats left for redistribution, and these seats are being given to France, Italy, Spain, Poland, Romania, the Netherlands, Sweden, Austria, Denmark, Slovakia, Finland, Ireland, Croatia, and Estonia. So all of these countries are set to gain seats, with the biggest beneficiaries of Brexit being France and Spain, both set to get an additional five MEPs. This is where the most recent Brexit delay is causing a headache throughout the EU. When the EU proposed these changes, they specifically noted the circumstance in which the UK would remain a member state. 
In the event that the United Kingdom is still a member state of the Union at the beginning of the 2019 to 2024 parliamentary term, the number of representatives in the European Parliament per member state taking up office shall remain unchanged until the withdrawal of the United Kingdom from the Union becomes legally effective. Once the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the Union becomes legally effective, the number of representatives shall change to the new proposals. This means that unless and until the UK leaves, the number of MPs shall remain at 751. So enough about the EU elections, let's talk about why we're having these votes, and what the European Parliament actually does. The European Parliament does have some parallels with the UK Parliament and other parliaments around the world. Both ultimately have three main roles. Budgetary, supervisory, and arguably the largest aspect, legislative. So let's break those down. When it comes to the EU Parliament's budgetary role, it is the Parliament's responsibility to, together with the Council of the European Union, establish the EU's running budget and approve the long-term multi-annual financial framework. The multi-annual financial framework, or MFF, is renewed every seven years. It lays out the maximum annual budget contributions of each member state and the maximum possible EU spending in each sector over the next seven years. As well as requiring the approval of the EU Parliament, the MFF also requires unanimous approval from the European Council. Interestingly, the current cycle finishes next year, and the EU needs to agree a new MFF by 2021. This is one of many reasons they're so keen to get Brexit done. Until they know what kind of relationship the UK plans on having with the EU, and hence what sort of budgetary contributions they're likely to make, they can't finalise the MFF. This sets December 2020 as a very hard deadline for any further Brexit extension, so that the EU can get the next MFF signed off. Given the fact that the Parliament is the solely elected body in the EU, it has the largest role in terms of supervision. It's ultimately responsible for all of the democratic scrutiny of the European institutions, the election of the Commission President, as well as approving the Commission as a body in its entirety, approving the way that the EU budgets are spent, discussing monetary policy with the European Central Bank and questioning the European Commission and Council. It's really vital to the functioning of the EU as a whole that this process is democratic, and as such, this is an incredibly important function of the Parliament. The legislative element of the Parliament is also crucial and actually takes up a lot of the Parliament's time. The European Parliament, together with the Council of the European Union, is the EU's legislature and is ultimately responsible for passing laws and directives throughout the European Union, based on the proposals brought forward by the Commission. It ultimately decides on international agreements and on enlargements. The Commission is the executive branch of the EU. It's sort of the EU's equivalent of the government. The EU Parliament, as the legislative branch, is the equivalent of, well, Parliament. The Commission proposes stuff, and the EU Parliament decides whether or not it becomes EU law. In the words of the EU themselves, a member of the European Parliament, working in the parliamentary committees, draws up a report on a proposal for a legislative text presented by the European Commission, the only institution empowered to initiate legislation. The parliamentary committee votes on this report, and possibly amends it. When the text has been revised and adopted in plenary, Parliament has adopted its position. The process is then repeated one or more times, depending on the type of procedure and whether or not agreement is reached with the Council. The Council is not legally obligated to take account of Parliament's opinion, but in line with case law of the Court of Justice, it must not take a decision without having received it. So we've talked about how MEPs are voted in, but how do they actually vote when they're in the Parliament? Considering that legislation is one of their key responsibilities, it's important they have a well-defined voting system. Most procedures in the European Parliament are conducted by simple and absolute majorities. If the Parliament wishes to reject the position of the Council on an ordinary legislative matter, it must be done with an absolute majority of component members. At least half of all members eligible must vote in favour. If the Parliament wishes to approve a Council position, again, a simple majority is required. So that's the basics of the European Parliament. They perform a lot of important functions within the European Union, and their powers touch the lives of all EU citizens. A lot of people see voting in European elections as less important, 
but there's a lot of power held within the EU. And voting for your representatives, those 751 people who wield all that power, is really important. We'll be reporting on the European parliamentary elections more. To make sure you follow this story and everything else Brexit related, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also find us on other social networks, including Twitter, Facebook, Patreon and Instagram, by searching for TLDR News. One last thing before I go, I wanted to point out that our limited edition Germany merchandise is about to stop being listed in our merch store. We've always said that it was a limited edition and that it wouldn't be around forever. In fact, maybe we should have already deleted it. Anyway, I'm going to be kind and give you two more days. In two days time, I'll remove it from the site and the Germany with shoes design will be gone. We let you vote for which country you wanted to see and you pick Germany. So we'll do the same again soon and let you pick the other country's designs. Also, if you want the UK with shoes or the EU or the US or even the UK and EU together, all wearing shoes, those designs will continue to be available alongside the rest of the collection. Anyway, there's links to all of that in the description, so I'll let you explore it for yourself.